Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to ONTV's coverage of Lake Orion Varsity Hockey. Tonight, the Dragons of Lake Orion go up against the Falcons of Farmington in an OAA Red Showdown. Welcome inside of Detroit Skating Club. I'm Craig Stockwell, and I'll be calling all of tonight's action. Along with me in the booth is my broadcast partner, Larry Rosen. Welcome, Larry. Hey, thanks, Craig. Great to be here. Happy New Year to everybody. Looking forward to a good game tonight. Well, Lake Orion has been red hot this season. They're off to a 10-1 start, winning their last four in a row. Their offense is on fire, almost equaling their goal to total from last season in only 11 games. Seven seems to be their lucky number uh, lately, as they've scored seven goals in each of their last three tilts, including that 7-2 to two, uh, thrashing of crosstown rival Clarkston at the at Comerica Park as part of the Winter Festival. Quite a special event just a few weeks back before Christmas. Uh, Farmington isn't doing too bad themselves. Uh, they enter tonight's contest with a 10-3 record overall, and they're tied with Lake Orion and Rochester United with four points apiece in the division. However, after winning three games in a row, Farmington fell in their last match to, to RU uh, to a score of 5-1. Uh, Rochester United put up 44 uh, shots on the outstanding Farmington goaltender, but he just couldn't uh, couldn't keep them all out of the net. So, with that said, Larry, what what does Lake Orion have to do to keep their win streak alive and hand Farmington their second loss in a row? Well, first of all, Craig, uh, thanks a lot. And uh, one of the most important things is keep doing what they've been doing the last four or five games, and that's playing good team hockey, playing well as a team, moving the puck, and uh, taking advantage of their opportunities. Uh, secondly, they need to play discipline. Farmington is a very good squad and always one of the most physical teams in OAA, especially when they're on the road. The Dragons must stay composed and be smart, which in turn stay out of the penalty box. And last of all, I know it's a cliche, but the Dragons need to score first. When at home and you score first, you get the fans into the game and usually come out on top in the end. Absolutely, Larry. And I'll tell you, the third one, uh, I think uh, even more important, uh, the, the Rochester goaltender has faced, uh, near, I think, around 33 shots a game on average, and he's got a, a 1.77 goals against, and more importantly, uh, I think like a 946 uh, save percentage. So um, that first goal, I think, is going to be absolutely critical. Well, yeah, they need to get in the side of the, into the heads of the Farmington team and uh, make that goalie who's uh, really good and, uh, you know, one of the top goalies in the state, uh, think about maybe he's back at it again for another five goal drubbing against. Get into his head is a good way to do it and score first is the best way. Absolutely, and the discipline team play, I think those are uh, both great keys. Um, you know, when when you're playing against a, a team like this that, that's hard to score on, a lot of times you, you can get impatient with the puck and you can start trying to force things or, or you can keep doing what you do well. And, and I think it's important for the, for the Dragons to keep on doing what they've been doing all year long, which has really uh, uh, created a lot of offense for themselves uh, in the young season. And I agree with you, and that's, you know, and that's staying out of the penalty box. It's a lot easier to score goals five on four than when you're shorthanded, and it's a lot easier to score when you get, to, get on the power play and need to take advantage of those opportunities. And the power play opportunities with a goalie like uh, Mr. Letheman here is going to be important. They need to put the puck in the net on the power play as well. Absolutely. Well, hey, uh, with that, uh, let's take a look at uh, some players to watch for in tonight's matchup. Uh, Larry, who from uh, Farmington should the Dragons keep a close eye on? Well, we've been talking about <laughs> it. It's number 30. It's their big goaltender, uh, John Letheman. He's got a 9.46 save percentage, allowing less than a goal and a goal, two goals a game. He's face, he faces an average of 30, you know, 33 shots a game. That's that's a ton of shots. He's he's the one, he's the reason they're 10 and three. I'm sure they got a lot of good players, but if you look at the statistics, you know, he gives up a lot. They give up a lot of shots. The Orion's got to pick their corners and put the puck in the net, but let the Munster the guy to watch. He's the key to their victories. Absolutely, and they kind of build out from there, don't they? Uh, like you mentioned before, a real physical team. Uh, they work hard. They're, they're well coached. So they're going to they're gonna feed off of that goaltending and take their opportunities when they can get them. Well, they've always been well coached. Like I said in the keys, they're always physical, especially on the road. They like to get under the skin of the opponent on the road. When they're at home, they're a little different team because they got the home officials in and they got their home crowd, and they don't need to do that as much, get under the opponent's skin because they're home already. So I'm thinking that uh, it's going to be a good tilt tonight. Absolutely. 
And so how about the Dragons? Uh, who needs to step up tonight in order to keep their win streak alive? Well, I, you know, it, this is a pretty easy one for me tonight. Drew Casey's been on a scoring tear, had a couple hat tricks in the last four games. You know, he's been putting the puck in there. He's a very talented guy, and he's finally coming into his own. And then again, you have to, you know, you got to keep an eye on Corey Stockwell, the senior. You know, you're, you know him pretty well, I think. He lives in your house. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's a great passer, has great vision, makes good decisions, and he's a playmaker for the Dragons. He's one of those guys, gets a little bit of power play time, a little bit of penalty kill, but he always seems to put the puck on his teammate's stick at the right time, and it goes in the net. So that's another one of the keys tonight's game is, you know, is Corey Stockwell. So... You know, we'll see how she goes. Well, I certainly, uh, like you mentioned, uh, Drew uh, going into the Christmas holiday had a had a nice hat trick there at the at Comerica, and then followed it right up with another one against uh, uh, Stony Creek, and uh, very impressive, uh, very impressive win there, seven to three against Stony Creek. Uh, really expected a much closer game, and then yeah, Corey kind of broke out last uh, in the last game with a, a playmaker of his own, three assists, and and uh, hopefully they can. Uh, help spark uh, that offense again yet tonight. Well, we'll take this opportunity to step aside for a moment, but don't go away, don't go anywhere. We'll return, we'll have Lake Orion High School varsity hockey action right here on ON TV. Stay tuned. Well, and here we go, Larry. Uh, well, one thing we didn't mention is we've got quite the, uh, the high powered matchup tonight in the sense of the, the state rankings. Uh, Lake Orion ranked fifth uh, in, the, in Division One. Uh, currently in the state rankings, and, and Farmington holding the number seven ranking uh, in Division Three. Oh, that's a pretty good matchup. I think the uh, MSHAA and uh, the OAA pretty excited about that matchup. It'll uh, change a few things at the end of this one to see where everybody falls, but uh, should be a lot of fun tonight, Craig. Absolutely. We're talking about the OAA Red has really been a, a kind of a powerhouse conference after a, a bit of a down year last year. It's right back there near the top. You've got... Uh, Rochester United, we mentioned them earlier. Uh, I believe they're ranked third in uh, in Division One uh, currently. So you got you got a lot of good hockey over here in uh, North Oakland County, and uh, boy, we're looking forward to a, a, a heck of a tilt here tonight. Yeah, it should be pretty fun. It's fun to see the Dragons in their uh, Winter Classic jerseys, the the whites with the horizontals, black and green stripes, uh, classic LO logo in the middle, beautiful jerseys. I wasn't able to make it down to the uh, to Comerica Park, but uh, this is uh, quite a treat to see these guys skating in these jerseys. Yeah, absolutely, it was an amazing uh, spectacle down there for sure. Uh, it was a very fun night. An opening faceoff, uh, 55 for Farmington, throws it into the Lake Orion zone. And I'll come to the Dragons. It's going to be tough to tell the difference between that light gray and the, and the white. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that, but I think they'll figure it out <laughs> pretty quick. Absolutely. 55 for Farmington tries it the other way and Strauss steps in to hold that puck in, throws it in deep. Guy went chase, puck comes around to the near side, tries it clear up the middle and it uh, manages to find its way through about five guys and out the other end. Oh, a nice stretch pass there by Strauss. Uh, just mishandled there by Drew Casey. Back to line, tries to throw it back up the boards but 26 holds, holds his own. Still battling near the blue line. Here come the Dragons. Guy with throws it in just wide of the net. Sidlowski in hard. Farmington's able to settle it. Break out the far side. Try a long pass of their own. Doesn't quite connect. And Strauss throws it ahead to Mesta. Oh, Mesta, a nice pass up the middle. Chappie with a nice shot there, Craig. Low, low glove side, good save by the goaltender. Absolutely. So we got uh, twenty-three Kirshner and Chase tries it ahead for Mesta, but he can't handle it. He gets thrown back into the deep into the dragon zone and out to Chappie. One touch pass over to Kirshner. Going to throw it in deep and let Connor Mesta go get it. A little sloppy handling of the puck there early by the netminder. Uh, yeah, might be able to catch him uh, napping. Uh, I didn't think. I, I don't think he was expecting that big bounce off these live boards here at the Detroit Skating Club, Craig. Uh, kind of squirted out off his, uh, off the paddle of his stick right off the backboard. Ben Bach goes back to re retrieve the puck for Lake Orion. Throws it around the boards, and he doesn't have help on that side. 
Well, that wasn't a very good play there. I don't think you realize they're in the middle of a line change. Uh, Gould's, uh, Gould comes out and a little miscommunication there, I think, with uh, number nine. So far, I don't know what uh, what you think, but I mean, it seems like a couple of teams kind of feeling each other out. I don't really see anyone uh, being overly aggressive. They're not taking too many chances. They'll play it pretty close to the vest. I would tend to agree with you, Craig, but it looks like Orion's got a little bit better territorial play here in the offensive zone. Ooh. And that's two quick shots by this line here. I, I was liking what I was seeing behind the net, some good behind the net play, and a nice centering pass on a... Uh, in the backhander, I think, by Stockwell, number nine there. It's a good play. Yeah, this line's been uh, putting on quite a bit of pressure of late, and uh, it's good to see they're going to continue that. They uh, keep that balanced attack when you have your, your third line going, like a first and second line. Line steps up. 55 almost gets around him, but he holds. I was going to say, that was a little risky play there by line, but he was able to get away with it, Craig. Well, I'll tell you, it seems to me like uh, early on here, Lake Orion is uh, fighting the puck a little bit. Yeah, a couple well, <laughs> of times where guys uh, have struggled to settle it. Yeah, mishandled it a little bit. Maybe uh, gripping the stick a little tight early here in this big tilt against the league rival. As we just saw a uh, clearing play by Strauss up into the rafters, which isn't something you see every day. Face off one by Farmington, but uh, Lyons able to recover for Lake Orion over to Gaiwa on the near side. Looks up to the middle for Casey and just misses him. I don't think uh, either team really has a, a distinct speed advantage. If I just just on first glance, I'd have to say Lake Orion maybe has a bit of a speed advantage. Yeah, a little bit, especially there with Sidlowski streaking down the wing. That looked like he was a little faster than anybody on the. Any of the gray squad here. 88 brings it around near side to 55. Tries to get it back to 88. He's going to take it off the boards, dump it in deep. As he Strauss finishes a nice check there at center ice. I think he'd, uh, I think he's trying to send a message early. Don't come into my zone. <laughs> Absolutely. He certainly finished that one. Nice little introduction. It was what we, here at Orion we call a little bit Balovich late. <laughs> Line up through the middle up, and he's going to be offsides with a delayed call. Yeah, uh, I think they kind of missed that one. He had the puck on his stick with the dragon still in the offensive zone. But we'll take that. Absolutely. 44 breaking out for Farmington, but he's taken off the puck by Mesta. Boy, interesting stat we mentioned uh, earlier, um, Larry, the uh, the goal scoring here for Lake Orion. The top six goal scorers or point leaders for Lake Orion have exactly the same points as the top six. Oh, no kidding! Well, point there was getters last year for the whole season. <laughs> That's pretty good. That was an outstanding play right there. Centering pass to Open Kircher, who just had a trickle off the heel of his stick for a shot on goal, but not much of a shot on goal. It's, uh, Glorious opportunity to first, probably the second nice scoring chance. Um, Farmington's still looking here, Craig, to chart their first shot on goal. Orion's uh, notch three so far, um, and two very nice chances. So, so far, so good for the Dragons. Absolutely, and here comes the uh, Gould Stockwell to fall line with uh, Bach and um, uh, Gronowski on the back end. Farmington comes out after a face-off win. Here Stop we go. with the puck. Odd man rush here. He's got help. He's got Defaw coming with him. He's going to throw it in deep. He gets knocked off the puck. Yeah, that's uh, that's interference. They, they usually call that these days and not this time. Looks like Defaw went hard into the boards. I didn't see. Uh, looks like he might have had some help getting to the boards. Nice chip ahead by Gronowski. He's got Stockwell with him. DeFaw takes a shot. Rebound. Score. Gold scores. Goal. Lake Orion goal. on the rebound goal. And there it is, that, that same line putting on the pressure. Uh, and I'll tell you, they're always working, Larry. And you see Gould breaking in, following up the play, 
a couple of rebounds, and, and he gets rewarded for it. Well, and absolutely, and, and like you said, in, your, in the play-by-play, -play, it was an excellent chip at center ice, pass a defenseman to cause an odd man rush, quick two-on-one, outstanding low shot. Um, I, who took the first shot, Craig? I'm not really sure. Right off the pads, right back out front to Gould for bang, a top-shelf goal. Yeah, it looked like DeFaw took the shot. Uh, the, the rebound got through past uh, Stockwell. Looks like you got uh, assists. I'm sorry, the go goal scored by uh, Gould, an assist to uh, Stockwell and Defoe on the shots. You know, two two quick shots, two rebounds, and here you go, third re second rebound into back of the net. I mean, in that sequence alone, three shots. Casey takes the face off and another face off win by Farmington. I'll tell you, that's an area I'd like to see the Dragons improve on tonight have not done really well on the draws. Well, we could uh, technically blame the offensive coach tonight, but it looks like uh, Coach Norrington is possibly uh, Oh, another beautiful, beautiful play. pass by Casey. And Sidlowski buries it. And boy, you, you mentioned that first goal being important, but how about a second one right uh, that after That was it? an unbelievable goal. You, you, you take the puck in and, it, and a, you know, quite honestly, it was a harmless two on two at the blue line. And uh, the, the the middle defenseman didn't take his man. Left Sidlowski wide open. Um, if we had a replay, you could see it. Casey poked the puck by defenseman. He didn't take the body. Just like that, beautiful play. Goalie was committed. That was an easy slam dunk for Sidlowski. Great pass by number 18, Casey. Absolutely, and and you know took the hit and made the play. So you gotta you gotta like the uh, the grit to uh, to finish those plays and. I'll tell you, it's an overused term, but puck luck comes to mind for me. And that, to me, a big difference between last season and this season is uh, the Dragons have really been fortunate with uh, some of the loose pucks. And, yeah, and, but the, the, uh, those the really, those two goals aren't loose pucks. Those are just good, good hockey plays. I mean, it, those don't get any better than that. That's, you know, that's one thing a coach loves to see, Craig, is good hockey plays, and that's what we're seeing tonight. Up into the netting, we'll have a face-off and uh, we'll take care of some business here. DVD copies can be purchased by calling ONTV at 248-693-3377 or 248-393-1060. For only $10, you can get a copy of not only this game, but any game or program in our broadcast vault. That's DVD copies, 248-693-3377. That was a nice, okay. nice face-off win by the Dragons. A quick shot off the draw by Stockwell. Goalie... Uh, Lethemon had to be super sharp on that, Craig. Gould tries a shot and it doesn't get through. Out comes number four for Farmington. Well, I'll tell you, Farmington has not spent a lot of time in the dragon zone with sustained pressure. No, that was a uh, and excellent. I did not knock on wood. No, but you know what? That was a that was a good play there by Defoe, realizing that the puck was coming to the weak side there, and uh, he didn't have to worry about his point man because that's not where the puck was going. He intercepted the puck. Stockwell up through the middle. And another interference so that they're just not calling tonight, Craig. Yeah, I'd like to see him go in with a little more energy than that to bust through there and make him make a call. I'd like to see him deck that guy in the, <laughs> on the boards there, but there you go. Well, the Dragons are certainly playing a lot in Farmington zone. Yeah, Farmington, I think, is trying to find themselves right now. A little bit shell-shocked at a 2 nothing deficit. Only uh, seven minutes into the match. Here comes Greaves stepping up into the play and Casey back to recover. He loses it out in front. Well, that's a dangerous spot. 88 steps in. Oh, he's got help. 65 or 55 quick shot and Aldrich able to steer that aside. 88 to the middle and they score. Yeah, that that whole that whole play there was. Uh, was Mr. Grebe there, not realizing that he was definitely outmanned at center ice, and that was a puck he picked off and should have just took it deep, and we wouldn't be in this, uh, wouldn't have had that situation where Farmington got good control, Craig. Certainly. Definitely need to uh, do a better job with uh, with the puck in the defensive zone, too. That was a very sloppy uh, sequence there. 
And it, it, at the end, it looked like uh, the Dragons were just chasing a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. And, you know, you don't want to give this Farmington team any positive uh, positive thoughts. You want to stay on them. And it looks like the Dragons are sitting back right now. Ooh, another dangerous play right in front of the Dragons net. Well, I'll tell you, so much of hockey is about understanding where you're at on the ice and what the right play is. You can't knock a puck down in front of your own net. No, sir. What did uh, Don Cherry say? If you're not going to block it, get out of the way. <laughs> there you go. Kirshner will step in for the faceoff with Nesta to his right, Chappie to his left. Faceoff kind of won by Kirshner, but uh, the uh, Farmington winger got a stick on it and iced it. We'll do it all over again. Dragons need to uh, keep the offensive going here, Craig. Absolutely. Best defense is a good offense. Keep the puck down in their end and pound away. And I would like to see them turn up the physical four check like Mr. Chappie just did there. I liked what I saw there. 55 breaking out for Farmington. Manages to get it to the middle of 88. Quick shot, wide of the net. Box steers it ahead. Chappie able to clear the zone. Nice play. Ahead to Kirshner. It's a two on three. He's going to throw it in deep and which is a Connor great. Mess to go do the work. That's a fine play there by Kirchner, realizing he was one on three, not trying to take it to the middle of the rink. Absolutely. Another shot wide of the net. Farmington's going to get there first, throw it in deep. Janowski steps into the Farmington player and out with the puck comes Gould. Far side to Mesta. Mesta dumps it in deep. Got Stockwell and Gould on the four check. Stockwell's able to tie up his man. Good play there by number nine, Stockwell. Tying his man up, picking the puck up loose here. Gould has it. He's going to throw it in deep now. He's probably to gain control of that puck once he made a really nice play to get it on his stick. Line steps up into the play. Got to like that. You yeah, like number big, 19 stepping in. Yeah, big fella making the... Uh, Making the farming guy, Farmington man, think twice about going that direction. Forces man to the outside, rides him into the boards, and out comes Strauss with the puck. Another nice play by. Looking ahead uh, to Stockwell, and he can't handle it through the middle. Well, it was a pretty good pass. Yeah, it was. It was off his skates, but uh, probably should have handled that a little bit cleaner. I'm being kind, I guess, Stockwell right? Stockwell on the four check. 44 throws it in deep for Farmington. Line gets there first. Intercepted by Farmington. They got something going here. Puck's loose in the slot, and DeFaw's able to clear it. Straw stepping in, tries to play it ahead to Stockwell. Gets intercepted by a number 11 for Farmington. Gould gets there, clears the zone. 22 gathering it, center ice, throws it in deep. Complete and a line change here for Farmington. Looks like the Dragons have gotten a change in as well. That's going to be an icing. I'm not sure what he was trying to go for there. I think he was trying to go for the stretch pass to uh, Sidlowski on the left on the left half board, but Sidlowski doesn't have that much stretch in him. Yeah. No, and it looks like maybe he uh, just got that hooked on the end of the stick there because it kind of fluttered up in the air too. Well, so far, Sidlowski's uh, come out and played really well. We know he's uh, battling an injury right now, and uh, doesn't seem to be too much of an ill effect there uh, with his stick handling. What do they call that, the old upper body injury? Upper body injury. There you go. Boy, they're really weak with the puck in front of the net. That's the second time Farmington has scored a goal because the Dragons were not strong enough in front of their own net. No, they were just soft on the puck, and we're right here, we're back, right back to where we started. Tie ball game. You got guys just reaching out for the puck, and I'll tell you, that's the second goal against that that uh, Casey Sidlowski and, and Guywa line. Yeah, they had the puck in full control behind their, their own net and uh, lost control and made weak plays in front of their own net. That's twice, as you said, Craig. We got a brand new game now. Nice play by Mesta back ahead to Kirshner. Brisky steps in. 
Gets by Gronowski and he's going to regroup. Over to Grebe. Or Bach, I'm sorry. Bach back to Gronowski. Or in the general vicinity. And Matt Gronowski is an equal opportunity uh, hitter and it's going to cost him now. It looks like he's going to get a... What's the call? Oh, here? they're gonna they're gonna make oh, the first they're gonna uh, make the Brisky. first call on Brisky, and they're not gonna call the cross check on Gronowski. Um, one of them was gonna get it, and the uh, back official near the Farmington bench called that on uh, Mr. Brisky a slash. Good call, I gotta tell you, Craig. Wow, kind and of agree with it. Turn quickly, uh, and that'll happen in a hockey game. All it takes is one one uh, goal, and the next thing you know. Now you're now you got a tie game and, and uh, Farmington's on the power play. Yeah, I can see that. And, you know, I think the total velocity of the two Farmington goals was like two and a half miles an hour. Yeah. But I guess when the puck's sitting on the on the goal line, all you have to do is tap it in. I guess you don't need to shoot it that hard. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, Mesta and Gould on the kill with Line and Strauss. Strauss takes his man into the boards. And there's an they interference. interference yeah, they, yeah, they just called Walk that way. One. And they get tangled up. And Moesta. I don't know if he's going to take them both or if he's just going to take the one. It looks nah, like the one, right? And Mesta, the better part of that, you know, smart smart teammate pushes his uh, teammate away and says, let's not get into one here. Well, now you got a four on four, and uh, we'll have an offensive zone faceoff uh, here coming up. And that negates that power. I think play he's chance. calling it, he call it, it almost looked like he called a four minute penalty there watching his mannerisms, but it was definitely an interference call on number 26, who happens to be, if I can read this, Nick Cazorro, number 26, takes the interference call. Nesta with the face And I off. was right, it is a four minute power play there, Craig. Right, he, get, he, got an he got minor. an unsportsmanlike and a interference. I was watching the referee and I saw that that's what he was. Sidlowski to the middle and the goaltender's able to handle that. Yeah, this this four and four situation, it should be a really advantage for the Dragons in their speed. You got Sidlowski out there with uh, Mesta and Zach Line and uh, Strauss, should be an advantage for them speed wise over the Farmington Club. Absolutely, and a face off one by Mesta. Back to line, quick shot, steer it aside. Got to get Sidlowski some traffic in the in corner. Got to get Kicks some traffic ahead. in front of that net, Craig. Absolutely. Nesta steps in, takes a quick shot, rebound, pucks loose, 55 breaking out for Farmington. Line recover. Oop, and we've got an icing. You're seeing these all important faceoff wins here by Mesta in the offensive zone in the four and four situation. Oh, yeah, absolutely critical. You do see a little bit of uh, Sidlowski's injury hampering him on the boards there, but looks like he's fighting through it, Craig. Yep. And uh, the Dragons are going to make a change here. They've got Grieve and Depry with uh, Kirshner and Gaiwa. Looks like the Dragons might have helped uh, Farmington break out on that play. Yeah, I think so. Depry with the puck. Looking for his options, and he loses it in his feet. And Farmington might have something going here, but Kirshner's able to step in. He's just too fast, Craig. Gets wide with his speed. Just couldn't get the puck over to Gaiwa. Got a hope. Strauss in line back on the ice. Puts a nice body check on him, but he needs to keep that elbow down. Nice pass over to Gaiwa. Line steps in as he couldn't corral it. That looked like it hit the netting, didn't it? Uh, no, sir. I didn't think so, but it's possible. Well, the ref didn't think so either. Yeah, what do they know? <laughs> Strauss with the puck with uh, just under two minutes left in the period and 2.22 left on the power play for the Dragons, who are now at full strength. Casey, Gaiwa, Kirshner, Strauss in line for the Dragons. And Farmington's able to ice at the length length of the ice. Pretty important two minutes here on the power play for the Dragons. Get back on top here, Craig. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Very critical. 
Now Sidlowski with speed to the outside. Oh, he cuts in and just misses his man in front. Yeah, Casey had a stick lifted there, Craig, by their defender. Good play. Shot blocked by number 22 for Farmington. 23, excuse me. Strauss comes out with the puck up ahead of Casey. Casey throws it in deep, takes a hit at the blue line and delivers one. And the Dragons are unable to hold it in. Well, 45 seconds left in the first period. 2 twos the score. Dragons on the power play, looking for one more rush. Really having a hard time connecting on those passes. Lately. Yeah, they're waiting way too long to make that pass, Craig. Strauss has it, 30 seconds left in the period. Throws it to the middle in case he can't handle a bouncing puck. But Lyons got her. Lyons steps in, throws it in deep. Strauss steps up, pinches, gets the puck, throws it to the middle. It's loose. Sidlowski takes a whack at it, but can't get it. That'll probably About do 10 it. 10 seconds here. left. Do it here for the first period. One more quick rush, six seconds left. They get a shot on goal, and that's about it as the clock's going to run out. And boy, I'll tell you, a um, little disappointing finish, uh, or I should say middle part of that period. I think the, the end of the period, uh, the Dragons were starting to get things going a little bit with that power play, but, boy, they were a little sloppy with the puck there, Larry. In their own zone, sloppy two times, and two times cost them two goals, Craig. Yeah. But to let the, with the power play in the four and four, the Dragons did begin to take over the play again, but uh, they got some work. They got their work cut out of them caught it for him. I'll tell you, the first the first goal, there were no fewer than two, maybe three Dragons that had an opportunity to clear that puck away from the front of the net, and they took half-hearted swings at it. The second goal uh, wasn't much better. No, oh, they had possession behind the net, lost the puck, and ended up in the back of their net, just like the first one. Well, we're going to step, step away here for the first intermission. Um, thanks for joining us for Lake Orion Hockey. We'll be back with second period action as the as the Dragons try to capitalize on what's left of this power play uh, at the end of one, it's Lake Orion Dragons 2, the Farmington Falcons 2. Stay, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Well, welcome back to DSC for second period action. Uh, we're about to get underway with the drop of the puck. And uh, boy, the Dragons really uh, want to uh, kind of get back to what they started with in this game and, and with a good strong four check and playing in the offensive end and uh, not so much uh, uh, mishandling the puck back on the, on the wrong end of the ice. I would agree with you. I mean, we've got the long change here in the second period, so line change is going to be important. And uh, with a 13 to 4 shot advantage, I think the Dragons would be a little better than tied 2 to 2. They got away with a little hand pass there. Strauss with the puck back to Casey. The Dragons on the power play for 14 more seconds here at the beginning of the second period. That's going to just about do it. Maybe get a shot here. And Casey can't get it through. Hits a foot, and down it goes the other end of the ice. And I guess he uh, iced it before he got out of the box. It's not when he gets out of the box. It's when the clock expires. Right. Then again, you don't have to have a degree to wear the orange stripes on your arms. <laughs> Oh, a little water. Help the Dragons out, then hurts well, the Dragons. Yep. It's a sticky puck. Casey steps in. Over to Gaiwa, quick shot, doesn't get through. Gaiwa with the puck in the corner. Trying to find someone, gets back to Casey. Back in for Gaiwa. Up to the point, to line. Line reverses and tries to throw it in deep. Nice play by Farmington to clear. Looks like it's going to be an icing, though. Well, it's not a that's not a terrible start. I mean, you didn't get a whole lot on the on the power play with 30 seconds left in it, uh, but uh, we did get a little bit of uh, offensive zone play there, and, and uh, they just need to kind of step up the intensity, I think. Yeah, they had a nice opportunity there at the end there, but it uh, was shot just wide of the post. We got Chappie out with the uh, Kirshner and. Messed a line. Battle in the corner. 
Kirshner helping out Mesta. Mesta's taking on two guys, and Kirshner's trying to figure out where's that puck going to come out. Mark's able to get it, but it clears ahead to the Farmington player. Oh, and Chappie steps in, makes a nice play at the blue line. Quick shot, gloved by the goaltender. Nice play by Chappie there at the blue line. Keep the puck in, get a good shot. And boy, I'll tell you this, uh, you know, so far what we've seen from the Farmington goaltender, uh, Letheman, um, solid, you know, pretty solid goaltender, good glove. Um, by no means is he standing on his head, but, uh, you know, he's making the uh, high percentage pat saves. Yeah, and he's, he's got a steady diet of shots coming his way, so he's doing, he's doing, their, doing the job. Bach coming back, moves it ahead to Gronowski. Nesta with the puck. He's got Chappie trying to find a hole in the defense. That young man back is a point. nice skater, isn't he, that Mesta? Yeah, he is. Great high energy kid, uh, great attitude. Um, obviously he's a, he's a junior with an A on his jersey for a reason. Um, he's one of the glue guys on this team for sure. Yeah, he's a really, really fine skater, good kid. You, and I've seen him for a few years, and he gets, every time I see him, he's, he gets better and better, which is what you want. Bach battling with 55 in the corner, comes back around, and Kirshner's got it for the Dragons. Boy, kind of a long shift for this this line. Yeah, it's it's, it's the long shift. they got to make that quick change, and here we go with the dump in and the full line change up front. All five guys, wholesale change here, Craig. And Depry steps in, throws it back into the neutral zone, and the Dragons are going to have to try to get it back. Stockwell steps into it, but loses a kind of tripped on his own foot there or something. Gould with the puck in the corner, looks to the middle, played with a high stick, but uh, the Dragons are going to get there first. Depry throws it back to the blue line and doesn't have anyone on that side of the ice. Now, good opportunity for a regroup to your D partner, and he didn't, and he made the uh, made the decision to take it up the boards. Gould tries it ahead for Stockwell, but it doesn't get through. Oh, right in the slot, another giveaway right in front of the net. Stockwell with the puck. Chips it ahead for Defaw. Stockwell steps in to number 23, and Greaves able to gather it, throw it in. Well, I'll tell you, I, what, I, what I'm seeing is, is the confidence that these guys, the Dragons, have been playing with for the last, uh, well, really all season long. They look a little unsure of themselves right now. I guess the one way to put it is you, 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 play, to not win, you play to not lose instead of play to win. Well, I'll tell you, I'd like to see that uh, pass there. You know, you yeah, gotta, so would you I. Two on one. You know, you, you gotta. You know, you got a solid goaltender. He's not going to give up a, a a weak rebound. You know, make the pass, make him move, make him make a play. And you got his goal scorer coming down the other wing in Sidlowski. So it's not like he doesn't know how to put the puck in the net. Yeah, absolutely. A win for the Dragons. Oh, and he, he scores. Zach Line. Boy, it's been there all year long. That shot from the point. You know, the coaches have talked to him. They say, you know what? We don't need a big clapper there. You got a nice, strong wrist shot. You're real accurate with it. And, uh, boy, that's a dangerous shot. Good, uh, clean face-off win, and bam, you are in. The, you got a 3-2 lead. Yep, and he came across, slid across the blue line. It, he almost shot it from the middle of his body, which I think probably with the addition of the screen, fooled Leffen in there, thinking he might see a pass the way line's body was set up. It was an excellent play and a quick release. Line with the puck over to Strauss. The Dragons are able to clear the zone, but without control. Line now settles it down, tries it up the right side, but a uh, guy was covered. Yeah, I kind of like that kind of shot. I, there was another Dragons defenseman that never seemed to wind up very much. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of snappers, a lot of wristers. Is, uh, as long as you can keep it low and on the net, good things happen. Absolutely. Strauss in deep here, Craig. And lines pinching on the other side. Controls the puck. Looking for some help from Casey. 
Well, it seems like we're outmanned a lot down there. I, I don't know if the... Oh, nice, nice play. play by Sidlowski. Loose puck in front. Casey back for Strauss. Over to Sidlowski. In his in feet. His feet. No, or, I'm sorry, for Gaiwa. Gaiwa's working hard down there, Craig. Working hard. The, the energy and the effort has definitely picked up since that goal for the Dragons. Sidlowski in deep now. Nice forecheck there by Sidlowski, causing a Farmington turnover. That's Another. a shot. That's a, that's a great shot there. Quick release and not a slap shot by Strauss. That was uh, Gronowski. That was Gronowski. On that shot, yeah. It was a nice, uh, nice strong wrist shot. Um, looked like it got deflected and went wide on the net. Oh, okay. I thought the goalie got a small piece of it. So we'll take that shot off the board. I'll tell you, the Dragons have definitely tilted the ice right now, Craig. Absolutely. Here comes Farmington on a one on four. He's going to throw it in deep. They're going to change. Ooh. Well, I don't. That was not one of the, that was not a good choice there. Yeah, four guys coming off the bench and trying to up that near side. Reversal would have been good. Oh, nice play by Kirchner there. No, nope. uh, uh, Masta tipping it away. Yeah, that play Ooh, there. Kirchner with the puck throws it to the middle. Oh, that play there for the Dragons, where they gave up the puck and it caused a little four on one. Is they had an open pass on the line change to the far side of the rink and didn't take it. I think I'll call that a shot on goal for the benefit of the doubt by Farmington. Well, I'll tell you on that last play, I can relate to uh, Mr. Kirshner, uh, the last, my last beer league game. <laughs> I had a play just like that. The goalie came out, I got the puck, and, and boy, I panicked with it. <laughs> Took a bad angle shot, and it really did nothing. I think he uh, maybe rushed that centering pass a little bit. Wow, there's a suicide pass. Yeah, nice body check, though. Puck up in the screen. Good body check. Suicide pass up the middle of the rink. Well, and Connor Mesta is going to go and clear the cobwebs. Uh, he got stood up pretty good there at the blue line. So, oh, that was Kirchner, I think, Greg. No, that was Mesta. Was it Mesta? Yeah. And a center, center ice faceoff. I think you just saw Coach Field saying to his defenseman, don't do that. That's how I, you get your forward's head taken off. Yeah. But kudos to the Farmington player taking advantage of a guy with his head down. That's what you got to do. Oh, no doubt. It's clean hit, clean play. Foss steps in. Backhand shot. Harmless, but if a rebound well, comes out, it's not so harmless. Good shot by DeFaw there. Leffelman is able to handle that rather easily. Don't, know where, don't know where Mr. Strauss found this music. <laughs> Come on, Johnny, be good. <laughs> you got to like Chuck Berry. Strauss with the puck. Wrist shot. Deflected, deflected wide. wide by DeFaw. Good play, though. Excellent play. Another shot steered aside by the Farmington defenseman. Line back around for Strauss. Nice play there. Oh, an Chappie. excellent effort oh. by Chaps there. Intercepted by Farmington. Here they come. 55 with a shot. Just steered wide by the goaltender, Aldrich. To fall with the puck. Up ahead to Chappie. Steps in. He's got a line going with him. To fall in front. Oh, he just can't get the shot off. I think he might have been rushing things a little bit there. I think he yeah. might have had a little more time to gather himself. Yeah, I don't think he realized how much time he actually had. Strauss back for the Dragons. And now it's uh, kind of gotten a little stale here in the last uh, two, three minutes, Larry. Yeah, it has, and Strauss just made a soft little pass there. If you're going to make that pass in neutral zone, it better go all the way across the rink, and no gray jerseys should be anywhere nearby to pick it off. And Strauss was a slow to get up there, um, but he's staying on the ice, so not sure what... Uh, I don't know if it was his pride that was hurt, or if he... No, he looks like he's struggling a little bit. The well, Dragons look like they're almost in like survival mode right now, just kind of going through the motions. 
Good poke check by Strauss and a nice save by Aldridge there. Yeah, he really regrouped. Uh, it looked like uh, Aldridge was almost out of position on that play, but he's able to, with the strength of that right leg, get himself back in position to get in front of that puck. Right there was definitely the best scoring chance of the day for the, uh, for the Falcons of the second period here. Puck ahead through the neutral zone, 26. Walks in, shot deflected wide into the corner. Strauss ahead for Sidlowski. Yeah, it's being icing. And it's going to be an icing. Again, see, now, you know, from Ryan, I, I expect him to make a play where he's got his head up and he sees where he's passing the puck. So that's pretty unusual for him to do that. I think he might have thought Somebody that was the over player there. was going, he was cutting the other way. Well, you could see the frustration in his in his mannerisms after he made the pass. Like, I can't believe nobody was there. Well, and I, and, and you know, I don't want to single him out because so many other guys have been doing that consistently, especially in this game. Um, but it just highlights how important it is to to have your head up, to to understand where your options are, and to verify those options when you're when you're moving the puck to try to make a play. That was a really nice play there by uh, Aldridge to deflect that centering pass. Was that going over the net? Um, no, that was that would have gone in. That's a save. Um, I thought that would have been a high stick if if the player had deflected it. I don't think he got a piece of it. No, I don't think he got a piece of it either. Kind of so, but that would entail the uh, referees paying attention. <laughs> Now that's offsides. Oh, he's got it. Yep, okay. late call by the by the official, but it was indeed offside. Yep. Or a hand pass, either one. So. Six oh five left here in the second. The shots are, shots are going in the score. second period. Five four Dragons. The offense for both here. teams is really tapered off it looks like yep absolutely well there's been a lot of mishandling of, of passes some kind of bad passes some blind passes the dragons need to get back to that puck possession that's been treating them so well a centering pass pucks loose goalie's able to gather it there's jake brisky right in the middle of it in front of the net well that's a good place for him to be absolutely and what I like about there with Brisky is he skated away from taking a two-hander in the face, which is uh, not something he would have done the same time last year, Craig. Absolutely. Um, you got to have guys that are that are uh, willing and able to get to that front of that net and, and do the heavy lifting, take those hits, and not uh, nice overreact. Yep, nice shot off the draw by Stockwell. Snuck right in there. Tried to sneak it in the short side of left him in there. Good play. Oh. And the puck just comes out of the zone. Depry throws it back in. And the Dragons had a hard time uh, timing up there, uh, clearing the zone. Depry up ahead to Gould. He tips it ahead, gets past Defaw. But Defaw is able to make a play. He tries a backhanded pass to Stockwell. Stockwell has it in the corner, right back to Defaw. And uh, Greaves steps in. He switched places. Stockwell battling in a corner. Comes out the other end for Farmington. Depry keeps it in. Over to Gould. He's got some room. Throws it into the corner for Stockwell. Stockwell mishandles it, but battles in the corner. Two on two battle in the corner, and Farmington's going to come out with it. 44 at center ice, looking for his options. And there are none. Throws it in deep. Depry with the puck. Up the middle of the Stockwell. Stockwell's going to go wide on the left side. He's got Gould with him. Quick shot up into the glove. That's good play. Gould was covered. It was a straight two on two. Put the puck on the net, hope for a rebound. Good play by Stockwell. Didn't have many other options there other than carrying the puck in behind the net, wait for the third forward, but I think he made a good choice there. All righty. Guywa with the puck. Shot is wide. 
Line steps in but can't hold the puck in. Gawa in the back check, hustles back, battles with 21 along the boards. You know, it looks like, uh, is that Casey? No, is that, yeah, Casey comes away with it. Up ahead to Sidlowski. Farmington's going to come away with it here through the neutral zone, back into their own end. Sidlowski now with the puck, intercepts it. Center ice and then throws a backhand right to uh, number 21 of Farmington. Strauss looked like he was stickless the way he was looking at us. I don't know if, I don't want to give him an excuse. I don't know if the gray jerseys have anything to do with it, but it just seems to me like the Dragons are, they're throwing pucks into sticks where they're, they're looking right where they're passing and yet still not, you know, making a clean pass. You know, I never even thought of it that way. I mean, they are definitely different, but I guess if you're going full speed on the ice, maybe you could make that mistake once or twice, but I would think that they're past that with 3.15 left in the second. Well, go mobile with ONTV anytime. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube on your mobile devices. Connect on ONTV to see what's happening in our new studio. See upcoming events and watch ONTV programs in high definition on demand. ONTV working to bring Lake Ori into the world. And there's all kinds of hockey action going on down here. Just an absolute horrible giveaway there by the Dragons twice on the far boards. You got the Kirshner, Kirshner, Mesta, and Chappie out here with Bach and Gronowski on the back end. The Dragons have been pretty fortunate tonight, Craig, that Farmington doesn't pinch a lot. Oh, loose puck. Oh, and it gets by him. Oh, boy. Nice shot by Chappie. Gets a rebound like he needed, and that puck just kept bouncing like an Indian rubber ball. Yeah, yeah. Farmington doesn't forecheck. It doesn't pinch very much, so. Oh, and a great wow. save and off the post. Wow. Nice, uh, nice centering pass by Chappie. He's really having a nice shift here. Yeah, you should. this whole line's having a nice shift, it looks like. Right back deep in the uh, Farmington zone. Messed a flying, Craig. He's coming for the wraparound. Steered aside, Chappie and Kirshner in deep. Kirshner with the puck. Settling it down. Goes the other way. He's got Gronowski pinching. And he just throws it up the glass. DeFoss steps in nicely. Throws it back into the slot area. Well, what a nice shift by that line. I never finished my thought. Dragons have been very <laughs> fortunate They're, that the Farmington point men aren't pinching. They're taking no chances pinching the puck in. So the Dragons are almost coming out off the half boards uncontested. And, you know, good sharp passes. And there's no pinch by Farmington at all. Right. And it is something uh, Coach Field should hopefully notice. We missed a trip there, Coach. Yeah. The fall made a nice playoff, that faceoff. But like you said, uh, the Farmington player got away with one there. Up ahead to DeFaw. No pinch. Looks to Stockwell, but he can't, hold, he can't uh, corral it. Goalie plays it ahead to this defenseman who throws it back in behind the net. DeFaw steps in. Oh, and almost comes out in front to Stockwell. 55, moving with some speed. Grebe going stride to stride with him. Stride for stride with him. 21 down in the corner. Centers it. Nice save by Aldrich. Oh, loose puck right in front of the cage. And the Dragons are able to steer it aside. Stockwell through the neutral zone with some speed. He's going to go to his right side. Steps in and just can't get much on that as uh, DeFaw tries to drive the net. I guess we'll give that one a shot on goal while we're at it. Heck of a couple of nice plays there by Farmington. Big rebound, big rebound, and banged that just trickled by the right, the left post of senior Aldridge down there in, in the Orient net. 37.32 seconds left in the second. Dragons up three to two. Well, I got to tell you, you know, I don't know if it's, it, I guess it depends on which side you're sitting on when they talk about, you know, for a goaltender to be sharp, you know, having a lot of shots helps. Um, I don't like it when my team's get, giving up a lot of shots, but at the same time, 
um, it, it's got to be hard back there when you're only seeing, you know, two, three, four shots a period uh, to be sharp uh, when, when uh, breakdowns happen. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And it looks like the Dragon just got away with the trip, so we'll take it. Oh, and a fine chance there. I think you say puck luck, Craig. You know, the puck has been banging off the Dragon just to stay deep in the zone most of the period, and the second period comes to a close. Wow, and just like that, we've got two periods down. Uh, and the, the Dragons were able to win the period. Um, not a whole lot of action there, kind of back and forth and, and uh, started out pretty uh, pretty good for the Dragons. Settled down a little bit and kind of a whole lot of nothing and then a couple scary moments there uh, toward the end yeah, There was the a, Dragons. There was a lull in the middle similar to the first period, but the Dragons were able to come away with the one goal lead. You know, like I said, a couple scary moments there. Pucks truck going off the side, but uh, so far so good for the Dragons. Up three to two, 17 minutes to play. And what do you got for shots there, Larry? I got a uh, 12 uh, in the second period for the Dragons, six for Farmington. So currently we're at 25 total Dragon shots, 10 total Farmington shots. Well, let's keep that up in the third period, Dragons, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll let the math take care of itself, right? Absolutely. So with that, uh, we're going to step aside here for a second intermission. Uh, thanks for watching uh, Dragons Hockey on ONTV. And stay tuned because we'll be right back with third period action. Welcome back to DSC. Uh, we're about to start third period action, but we wanted to take a moment uh, to thank our sponsors. Uh, as uh, you may recall from our last broadcast, we talked about the uh, renovations that were done in the, the Lake Orion locker room. Uh, new state of the art lockers installed, and it really couldn't happen without uh, the generosity of these uh, fine local businesses and uh, our Lake Orion Dragon sponsors. So with that, our hat trick sponsors are Shane Mold and Engineering, Frank Rewald and Son, Sanovac Service, 51 North Brewing Company, The Klansman, International Industrial Commercial Contracting, Aristio, Aramsco, Vaughn Hockey, HealthQuest Lake Orion, and Complete Tooling Solutions. Thank you again from uh, Lake Orion Hockey and the entire community of Lake Orion for supporting uh, your local athletes. Um, boy, Larry, you just can't, uh, you really can't put a value on, on uh, companies stepping up and, and take care of the kids like that. No, it's great, and uh, the Lake Orion community has always been great about doing that. And uh, a couple, of, many of these sponsors are return sponsors for the last few years. It's been unbelievable. Um, well, uh, yeah, absolutely, uh, Larry. Um, the uh, Dragons are making their way to the ice as well as the Falcons here. And uh, uh, our next broadcast uh, will be uh, against Crosstown rival Clarkston on uh, January 25th. I believe that's a Saturday uh, 8 p.m. game. Uh, should be uh, quite a buzz. This place will be packed. Always and is, I'm Craig. I'm sure Clarkston is going to want to avenge that 7-2 that to two loss they took, uh, took at uh, uh, Comerica with a third period explosion of five goals by the Dragons. Yeah, but they're probably saying something like it was colder on their side of the rink or something, you, you know. <laughs> Who knows what comes out of the Wolves, you know? Well, I'll tell you, we, we didn't just win the, the hockey game. We definitely won the Battle of the Uniforms as well because this this design that uh, Coach Field has put together for the uh, the classic jersey is just fantastic. Yeah, they're, they're great-looking uniforms, and the kids are playing well right now. Farmington's able to move it ahead, but uh, Lyon kicks it out to center ice. Gaiwa on the forecheck. Trying to hold it in, but it comes back out. And it's going to go all the way down the ice, but no icing. First couple minutes of the third is really important to the Dragons to uh, set the tone here and not let Farmington get back in this thing. And, uh, oh, it looked that's... like Casey touched that puck, didn't it? Nah, he, that was a definitely a other side of the rink. Wow. Well, I guess we should play with the penalty door closed. <laughs> Brian Sadlowski always... Uh, Taking care of some housekeeping. <laughs> well, he certainly doesn't want to go into that open door. 
Casey taking the draw. Sidlowski jumps right in, but it looks like he might have gotten in a little early. Yeah, good play by Sidlowski. Gonna drop it again. Trying to uh, guess the snap count there, so to speak. And Casey gets kicked out. Wow. Linesman did a nice job of dropping the puck before anybody was ready. Yeah, well, they don't have to wait. You know the rules. <laughs> Strauss ahead for Casey. Over to Gaiwa. Boy, well, I would have liked to have seen Alex get wide there. He just kind of plugged up the middle, and Casey really didn't have anywhere to go on that play. Yeah, and he fired it high and wide, which doesn't do any good to any for anybody. And that looks like it's going to be an icing. Looks like Coach Fields got him putting a little forecheck on right now with some physicality. I like what I'm seeing out of the first couple minutes for the Dragons. Hey, I, you know my philosophy. I always like a strong forecheck. I want to keep that puck as far away from my goal as, as I possibly can. And I think that strong offensive forecheck is always the best defense. There was a hook that uh, Farmington just got away with on Mr. Brisky. He put some lumber in number 11. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm not sure where uh, Mr. Aldrich went, but he wasn't anywhere near the net. And Brisky is loose. Oh, nice shot. The goalie just gets a piece of it with his right uh, shoulder. Risky with the puck again, another quick shot. Well, was a nice little shift there for uh, number five. Yeah, and uh, goalie left him and swallowed him both. Swallowed that one up. The first one was a nice shot. You got uh, Kirshner, Brisky, and Mesta with Bach. Granowski in the back end. Nice, another quick shot by... Uh, Mesta. Now Brisky's in the middle of something. Tell you, you know, quite honestly, the goalie's the one who should be getting the penalty. The goalie's out of his crease right there alone, Craig, is, to, wow. is a two-minute uh, delay of game penalty. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. I got a feeling number five's going by himself. No, they, there's going to be a, they're going to take a player off the ice for the goaltender as well. Pick one is what I think the referee's telling them. Pick one. Five on five, Craig. Okay. Five on five, you got that one right? Pretty sure. And quite honestly, the goalie's lucky that, uh, Farmington's lucky they didn't get an extra penalty for the goalie leaving the crease. Yeah, looks like number 21's gonna get, uh, is gonna serve the penalty. Um, Jordan Hoke. Could be related to Brady Hoke, there's no headset. I believe he's a freshman. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes slash on Brisky. Two minutes for roughing on the goaltender, uh, Lethemann. Didn't even get the right call there. That's a, that's a delay of game. It isn't a rough. Boy, too many times I've seen Dragon skate right by the puck. Yeah, and they lucked out there because that uh, was a wide open shot that hit the goal post. Okay. If I'm the goalie and I can get my hands on that puck, I want to freeze it right now and get another group out there. 88 with a quick shot. Steer well, aside by Aldrich. Well, I don't understand the logic in playing the puck uh, number six, Bach, with his hand instead of his stick. Didn't make much sense. and just took it right up the boards to the same place it was before. Well, I, I tell you, I don't like the just throwing it ahead and hoping move. Mesta steps in. Nice, nice play by Chappie to get it back to Mesta. Quick shot. That puck's got to go back. Comes. Behind the net, good play would have been behind the net. He waited too long, and there's a slash he just got away with. Puck gets thrown back into the dragon zone. Seven Grieve is going to retrieve it. Looks over to his partner, Depry. Looks like Farmington might be stepping up the energy level a little bit, trying to get the equalizer here. Yeah, that's what they're going to have to do. Gould chips it over to an empty wing. The key but is the Dragons have to out. Dragons have to match that uh, intensity right now. Fall with the puck behind the net. Tries a 
tries a centering pass to Stockwell with two guys on him. But it wasn't a bad idea. I just uh, don't know that he had much of a lane there. I don't think he did. Stockwell with the puck. He's got some speed coming up. He's got the fall with him. Yeah, oh, never saw him. I don't think he corner. looked on that one. Tell you, Farmington's getting away with a little hacking and whacking here in the third, early in the third. I'm surprised we're not seeing a couple calls by the officials on either club. Ooh. And a couple of feet came together there. Oh, nice set up. Quick shot, but wide again. I get the shot by Gaiwa. They're finding a lot of legs in these shots, too. Yeah, they are. Farmington's doing a nice job of blocking shots. I can say that for sure. Line comes back for the puck. And Farmington's going to change. Moves it ahead for Gaiwa. Oh, Casey sidesteps a suicide Knee. pass. Oh, he might have just tipped the post on I think that, that grazed one. the goal post there. <laughs> Good call, Craig. 55 coming with it with uh, some help for Farmington. 88 in the corner with the puck. Zach Line puts a nice hit on his man, number 55. Moves it around. Sidlowski's going to get there first. Ahead for Strauss. He's going to just chip it ahead and try to go get it. Oh, and another interference they don't call. you got to love it. They're letting him play today, Craig. Casey throws it in deep and it gets deflected up over the netting. Did he call a penalty? I think we got a penalty here for on Farmington. A high stick, possibly. Looks like uh, number 55 is going for a trip. Wow, I didn't see it. So, but we'll take it. That was a makeup for all those other ones. I'm telling <laughs> you, you know, they're letting them play. They're not. They're not glaring penalties, but they've stepped in for a few interferences here and there that they could have called, that we've seen called game after game, Craig. Well, if I'm correct, I think this is the third power play for the Dragons. Yep, absolutely. You are correct. So maybe the third time will be a charm. I don't think we scored on the other two. Mesta with the puck, throws it in deep. You got Kirshner, Stockwell, and Defaw with Mesta and Grieve on the points. The fall with the puck. We got the it back to Mesta. Four forwards out there now. Is that what this is, Craig? Stockwell with a shot on the ice, steered aside by the goaltender and covered. And Coach Field is going to stick with this group here. Uh, there's about a minute 34 left in the power play. Probably look to get another good 20 seconds out of this group and think about getting that, that other line out there. And Farmington's able to win the faceoff and throw, throw it down the length of the ice. Nesta gathers it for the Dragons. Up ahead for Kirshner. Kirshner with some speed, but he's got to sidestep uh, some bodies. Nesta step into the middle. Sunshine, he scores! What a beautiful play. Beautiful blast, and what made it was Mesta's recognition to take that puck quickly to the middle and get off a quick shot. And look at that, a two-goal lead here late in the third period. And I'm not even sure that uh, Leffen and the goaltender saw the shot. It was a real interesting uh, play for Kirchner, who carried it in, and the Dragons were uh, cognizant about staying on sides because Kirchner ran into a Farmington player who didn't actually play him at all. Right. So it, quick chip back to Mesta. He skates the middle, like you said, I think it was a double screen. I'm not sure the goaltender ever saw that puck, Craig. And the goal scored by 22 Mesta, assist by number nine, Corey Stockwell. Chappie steps in, I'll tell you what, Jake is having a heck of a game today. I would tend to agree with you. He seemed to have been in the right place. He's uh, put the puck on the net, made some nice passes, played a little body today too. It's, uh, I like Chappie's game. He's been very, very aggressive, um, especially offensively. And uh, like you said, he's been physical. Stockwell with the puck in the corner, throws it around to Chappie. Just keep working there, Chaps. Wins, that a, a, boy. wins a battle, back down deep for Stockwell. Gets kicked ahead and back down in. Chappie knocks it ahead. Tries a little wraparound. Gould with a, wow. 
Boy, he got smoked from behind. How is that not a penalty? Knocked his helmet off. <laughs> yeah, well, I, and you can see him hit rubbing the back of his head as if he did get hit from behind, but. Uh, That's got to be whiplash. Well, they're going to take the face off outside wow. because the helmet came off. But a nifty little play by Chappie behind the net. Little give and go. Uh, boards play in the corner by Chappie and Stockwell. Not the biggest guys in, you know, on the team, but they did a nice job fighting off the defenders and making a nice little, uh, getting the puck out in front of the net. Absolutely. Making the most of the opportunities out there. That line has been uh, pretty consistent the last uh, handful of games for sure. I, I like the way Zach Line is playing. I think that he's really playing aggressive and he's stepping up at the right times. Absolutely. Nice pass ahead for Gaiwa. He just throws it to the middle and what? I want to see guys bear down on their passes. You know, you just you got. If you're going to throw it to an area, you got to know your guy's going to be able to get to that spot. Otherwise, you got to put it on his tape. I would agree with you. That's an icing right there, Craig. Goalie came out to play it. I'm not sure if that's why they waved it off. They shouldn't have. 26 been. walks in. That was not a shot on goal. 23 in the corner with the puck. Yeah, Lyon's going to get an interference there, Craig. After the play, he made the initial hit and then took his man down long after the puck had already gone back behind the net. Okay. Well, the Dragons, this is going to be an important kill. There's 9.31 left. They want to maintain that two-goal lead. And one of their top killers just is in the penalty box. Right. Is that a hold? Is that what he called? No, he called interference. Zach okay. took the number 19 line, took his player into the into the corner and finished the check twice after the puck had already gone clear around the uh, to the other corner. Well, it looks like we got a timeout by Farmington. They're they're gonna figure out a way to to pull this within a goal in their minds. Well, if you're a fan of sports talk and just plain zaniness, then tune into Between Torminas, a different kind of sports talk show. New episodes air live Wednesdays at 6:30 p.m. right here on Public Access Ch Comcast Channel 10, AT&T U-verse Channel 99. Also check the ON TV program guide at orion.ontv.org for other airtimes that best fit your viewing schedule. Well, this is going to be a critical two minutes here, uh, Larry. Uh, just extend the lead to, to two goals. And now you're in a spot where you've got to kill a penalty. Um, you've got to stem the momentum. You've got to stave the momentum of the Farmington Falcons, what you've got to do here. And I believe this is only their second power play, and the first one was cut short by a penalty, was it not? No, uh, this would be, I think, their four? third power play. What's oh, their third? Okay. Well, you've got Chappie and Kirshner on the kill with uh, Greeb and Bach back on the blue line. Up through the middle. Oh, can't clear it. Nice nice play by Aldrich to clear that away from the net. And Chappie will take it the length of the ice. Well, they're going to, the Dragons are going to be happy to just sit back and try to clog up the middle here on this uh, kill. I think they almost, uh, Coach Field must have the opinion that they're not overwhelmingly talented up front where they have to worry about a four checker to break down their breakout. Right. Well, I, I think that's a pretty astute observation. It, uh, they certainly don't make their way up the ice uh, quick. And it looks like a possible two-on-one here for the Dragons as Kirshner goes into the corner. But uh, uh, Farmington's able to catch up. Bach makes a nice play into the corner. Oh, and he steps right around the puck. Bucks loose out front, 55 kicks at it a couple of times and lands on top of the goaltender, Aldrich. Boy, he's got to get, he's got to find that puck sooner than that, Larry. Yeah, he nobody even saw, saw that. that puck. And it was, it was one of those plays where if you're not sure you can get the puck out up the middle, you better put it off the high glass. That one Fortunate make... redirect there to the corner off of uh, Greaves' leg. Down deep in the corner. 
Oh wow! Right through the right through the goal mouth and out the other side. Wow! They get away with a hook there. My goodness. Number seven throws it to the net, and just the, steered aside. And the ironic part of this whole deal is, is the Dragons haven't been able to take this original killing unit off the ice. Right. Wow. There's a whole lot of pucks laying around in front of the net. But what I like there is I like uh, Kirchner absolutely taking his man out in front of the net so he couldn't shoot, the, so he couldn't get a piece of the rebound. Right. 88 steps into a one-time shot, but doesn't get all of it. Dragons are going back to the box for, for an invisible penalty, and they're not going to call the hook there. If you look where the stick is, the Farmington players in the Dragons' feet. And an elbow call on uh, 23 Kirshner. I didn't see it, Craig, but I was watching the puck. I... We don't right. have the uh, luxury right. of the replay tonight. Fortunately, now now you got line back out there with with Strauss, and you've got uh, Gould with Mesta up front. Strauss with the puck tries to move it ahead. Farmington centers it, bouncing puck through the goal mouth, and all the way down by Counter Mesta. Well, you certainly don't want to have to kill them back to back, but here we are, 6:41 left, a minute 32 left on the on the uh, power play for Farmington. Line taking his man 24 into the corner. Oh, and there's that was a, a dangerous play. It there. Sure was. He lost his footing, and uh, Zach Strauss is down on the puck to blow it dead. But 19 uh, is pretty lucky he didn't get a penalty there for checking three guys without the puck. Yeah. Uh, something got in under his uh, skin there because uh, normally pretty reserved, albeit uh, physical player, uh, he doesn't usually take to uh, emotional outbursts on the ice. So, um, who do we got here? We got Casey with uh, Gronowski, Stockwell, and Bach. Minute 10 left on the kill. Important minute here, Craig. 55 setting up shop in front. Wrist shot wide. Gronowski will get there, and he just throws it blindly, but he gets it down the ice. Now, so. as long as it's over their head, they can't stop it. So not taking it off the boards isn't a bad play if you're sure you can get it over their head. Stockwell chasing 88, bothering him with the puck. He gets it back to 21, across to the point. And a rebound shot. Puck's loose. They're able to clear it to the corner. Stockwell ices the puck. Couple, couple fine saves there by Aldridge, and who's got to be the best player on a penalty kill, Craig? Yeah, absolutely. Your goaltender. The guy between the pipes has got to, got to take care of business. 15 seconds left on the kill here, Craig. The price steps into it to Stockwell, and he's going to ice it, and that should just about do it. They so get fresh. The Dragons get fresh legs out on the ice. Sidlowski with uh, Gaiwa. And here comes Kirshner out of the box. Five minutes left in the game. Well, that's a couple of huge penalty kills there by the Dragons uh, to maintain that two-goal lead. Yep, and some key saves. There's some key saves there by Aldridge, and uh, some little luck never hurt too. So and Kirshner steps into one. 55 uh, takes some liberties. Two 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 slashes and a cross check with the referee right there and no call. Reed. Coming out the other side with it. He's going to go in deep. Guy was supporting. Now they're going to reverse that. Puck comes out. And Lake Orin will throw it right back in. Boy, I would have liked to have seen him reverse that to his partner. He's yeah, wide I open was, on the other side. I was looking for the regroup as well. So, you know, you now you're looking to eat some clock and just keep possession of the puck as long as you can. And a regroup there to your partner is uh, not a bad, not a bad thing. 44 goes in just ahead of the play uh, for Farmington. And you can uh, thank Sidlowski for that, for uh, nudging uh, uh, Sidlowski or Casey for nudging him 
across the blue line a little bit early. <laughs> a play that I do like to see when you got the opportunity to bump that guy uh, over for an offsides. You gotta you gotta use uh, every advantage you can. Strauss with the puck down in the corner tries to throw it ahead to his wing, but he's able to to fight through it as the Farmington player stepped in front. Nice play over to Brisky, but he can't. He gets uh, stood up stood up by the defenseman there for Farmington. It's kind of a nice play all the way around right there. Ryan steps up to take the puck away from 88. Now you got a couple dragons trying to rush up the left side. Mesta on number two. Okay. Another hook. Mesta battling for the puck. And the puck's in deep. Risky uh, almost got a free shot at number 88, and it's going to come all the way down the length of the ice. Three oh eight left to go in the game. It's still a four to two game, four to two game, and you've got the gold the uh, De Defaw and Stockwell line with uh, Bach and um, Gronowski on the back end. Stockwell steps into the middle. Played up the left side, and Gould makes a nice play and steps in front of number 23 and playing, playing the body nicely there. Gronowski looks like he might be on top of the puck. Now moves ahead to uh, Gould, throws it up the left side to Defaw. 22 steps in, quick shot, Stockwell in front, is able to clear it. And out it comes. Gronowski ahead to Defaw. He's got gold with him. Big rebound again. This time it goes into the corner. As Farmington's able to cover it up first. There's another play we'd like that regroup to the defenseman to, to uh, keep possession of the puck, and we didn't see it there, Craig. And then a blind icing on a line change, which doesn't make any sense, but I think, uh, I think Young Stockwell was uh, not sure what was going on and just made sure that the puck came out of the zone. Yeah. This is, uh, yeah he was, maybe he was hoping for one of those stanchions to slow that one down. As a good friend of mine said, a coach said, that's why the good Lord invented glass. If you all in doubt, throw it off the glass. That's it. Goldie's empty uh, with two minutes left at the Farmington side of the rink, Craig. So it's six on five right now for uh, the Farmington Falcons with the goalie pulled. Six on five. One, 142 to play. Buck comes up to the point, he throws it in deep and uh, Casey's able to knock it into the corner. Up the near side, Gaiwa pressuring the point. Farmington throws it to the Wow, they center the puck, but it uh, goes through harmlessly. Centered it to nobody. We like that. There's a lot of chasing going on right now, but uh, the Dragons are able to clear Grieb ahead to Sidlowski, and this should do it. And he, and he fires misses it wide. wide. Just got to bear down and bury that shot. Yeah, take a couple extra steps. He had nobody near him. Um, the third, the elusive three goal lead is the thing we like to see. One minute to play. All right, um, 53 seconds, just under 54 seconds to play. 4-2, Dragons lead. Empty net here for Farmington. And um, the ref is not going to let uh, the Dragons make that last change. Which makes no sense because the Dragons have last change. Right. They're sending all kinds of guys back to the bench. 
Right now is when Coach Fields should call his timeout. If he wants to make that change, call the timeout. I don't blame Farmington. They were trying to get a seventh guy out there. But uh, the ref was not going to have any of that. Strauss can't quite clear. Oh, but uh, boy, Guywa. Guywa might have got away with one there. And Strauss fired it wide trying to get to the open net as well, Craig. Or maybe that was uh, Masta. Somebody was hooking somebody over there. We're not giving him a shot on goal for that. It was outside the blue line. Aldrich, Aldrich uh, covers up here. 32 seconds to play. Did they start the clock on that last faceoff? Yes, they did. <laughs> okay. Seemed like that a was little a, bit late. So pretty slow. Play. Pretty slow. 10 seconds. Um, all right, just about a half minute to play. Kirshner cannot win the faceoff. It's down deep in the right corner behind the. The Dragons goal and line makes a nice smart play and just throws it down the length of the ice. And they're going to call that icing. That Un puck was going to die on the goal line. Uh, unbelievable. 20 guess, seconds left. Craig, that's the old look like you're skating fast even though you're not. I'll tell you, I, I didn't realize time moves so slow in rink C. <laughs> Spartan Bob must be here. There you go. And they clear it once again, and Mesta now battling for the loose puck. He gets hit from behind while he's tangled up with another guy, and that's not a penalty. As he get hooked, continuing after that play as well, Craig. Well, Farmington's a little frustrated. I think they thought uh, they were going to come in here and take it to the Dragons, and it just didn't happen that way. And uh, that empty net goal will not count as it came after the buzzer, but it doesn't matter. Your final score here tonight in a huge... OAA Red showdown as Lake Orion steps into first place in the OAA Red with a 4-2 victory over number seven uh, Farmington Falcons. So with that, uh, Larry, um, you know what? Uh, what, were you, what impressed you the most uh, in this? Uh, well, the, this win. the thing that impressed me the most here is that the, the Dragons came back after their little lull and that uh, Aldridge stepped up on the penalty kill. And that was really the key to the game there with two back-to-back -back penalties in the third period. And uh, they just kept composed, didn't take any bad penalties like we talked about, and good things happened. And team that scores first at home usually wins. Absolutely, and I think the persistence. They, they The Dragons didn't get down. They didn't, when, when uh, they gave up that two-goal lead, uh, they just kept doing, uh, you know, what, what they were having success with and uh, didn't get frustrated by a goaltender that uh, was, was solid. He wasn't, uh, he didn't stand on his head by any means, but, uh, you know, they, they didn't allow that to get in their heads and, and, and rush plays and, and force things. I would agree. They won at three stars tonight. Number 19, Zach Lyon, just a solid game all around. Number two star um, would be... Uh, Logan Aldridge, the number three star, would be Jake Chappie because Jake just had a good game. The young man doesn't get a lot of ice time, but when he does, he takes advantage of it. And I've been watching him, and I thought he had a phenomenal game, and I think that uh, Chappie definitely deserved a star tonight. Absolutely. Well, there you go, uh, your three stars. Uh, star number one, uh, Zach Line. Star number two, Logan Aldridge. And star number three, Jake Chappie. And with that, uh, we'll sign off. We'll see you back on uh, January 25th. Um, when we host, uh, or actually we're hosted by Clarkston um, for that big uh, rematch with our uh, crosstown rival. That's always, so, a, that's always a fun one, Craig. For, for Craig Stockwell and Larry Rosen, uh, good night, Lake Orion, and uh, we'll, look forward to see, we'll look forward to seeing you again next time. And stay warm. Take care.